Hey, YouTubers, welcome back for another adventure. Now for something slightly different. This Cub Cadet RZT50, I've had it for approximately five years. I've used it for five seasons. This will be season number six. And it's been bulletproof reliable for me. It's got a two-cylinder um, Kawasaki engine on it. You could see it's the FH661V and AS05. Anyway, so this year it's time to start up and start cutting grass and you turn it over and it'll fire once and then stop or fire a couple of times, a couple of beats and start. I've charged the battery up, checked the oil, done the normal stuff. But as I'm looking down here, I'm thinking maybe something ate on my wires or a safety is tripped. So it's time to start troubleshooting it. I'm going to start <laughs> by topping up the battery and let's pull out a plug or two and see what's going on there maybe even do a quick compression test on it I happen to be looking around I'm always kind of keeping an eye open I really like this machine I'd love to find one where the uh, engine <laughs> and uh, actually I just like to find one cheap and uh, have a second that way I can put the two of them together as parts and I keep finding them with um, blown engines the Kawasaki not the uh, Kohler engine I've found a couple of them where the Kohler engine is blown a quick side note and I learned this the hard way you might find one of these real reasonable uh, then you go to smash an engine on it and the engine has a longer shaft not only do you have to watch the shaft diameter um, you could kind of get around that if your shaft is a little thin by putting a sleeve on it. But the length is extremely important. And especially if you have a smaller diameter and um, a smaller length, right? How do you fake <laughs> the rest of it? You're not going to. The longer shaft motors are harder to find use. And they're more expensive and a lot of times it's kind of one-of-a-kind type thing so instead of picking up your hundred and fifty dollar used motor you end up having to buy a new one and you start crowding fifteen hundred so if you pay five hundred for this and fifteen hundred for a motor you know what kind of drive what kind of condition are your hydrostatic drives in and the deck and everything else because now you got a couple of grand out right um, so just something to wonder about if you've blown up your motor you're kind of a whole lot of <laughs> screwed um, anyway let's pull the plugs do a quick compression test make sure that the motors still alive under there as you can see the plugs actually look very good <laughs> they look very healthy so now the compression test okay we're gonna try to do two things at once well three run the camera I'm gonna do a compression test and we're gonna check the spark on one side so wish me luck so we have compression and hopefully you guys saw it spark so one side is good okay here is side two compression. anybody seeing spark I'm not seeing any spark I changed the no I'm seeing a spark there you guys seeing it So, we seem to have spark both sides, we seem to have compression, why no start? 
When I did the spark test on the left hand side, I just moved the compression tester and the plug over from the right hand side. Here's the plug that was originally in the left hand side. And I got no spark out of it. Could this be as simple as a bad spark plug? So they are NDK plugs. I think I'm, uh, I'm just going to run out and get a set of these. We'll smash it in there, see if she fires up. All right, folks, wish me luck. Probably had enough starting fluid in there to uh, to blow up a small town, but from uh, other attempts when it didn't start. So I'm really gra glad this thing started. It's a 56 inch cut, which means you're basically doing 48. You know, you do a small overlap. If I'm not cutting with that, I got to use these Sears mowers. And they're fine, you know, we just put a motor on this one um, last year, but they do uh, 42 per, t per cut. And then once again, with the six inch overlap, that's 36 compared to 48, you know, every, uh, I got to go around one, um, four times in a loop to cut the same amount that guy cuts in three. Also the Cub Cadet has a uh, bit more horsepower so it seems that it uh, I'm able to cut at a faster speed right going forward um, these guys you kind of pop them into third or fourth and lug along it 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 takes probably twice as long to cut the grass with these these two guys than the uh, than the zero turn so I'm really happy that that thing is back to life I've, believe it or not, this is strange, I've not had an NDK spark plug fail me like that. So I don't know, maybe there was some water in there that put out the flame, so to speak, or, or something. But you can see it's starting right up, it's sounding good. Um, I do cover it in the winter, not as well as I should. <laughs> it's actually amazing that thing has run as well as it has just to give you guys some statistics on that zero turn and what condition it's in I got it it had around 500 hours on it it currently has 800 hours on it I put a little over 50 hours a year a little over an oil change on it per year and as a matter of fact it's gonna go down to the driveway get the tires fixed and get an oil change now anyway um the person i got it from traded it to me from a golf cart he showed up with an old ford ranger <laughs> and the trailer um he rode it on one of the local parkways and uh had the state trooper pay all kinds of attention to him uh luckily he skated loose um, because that trooper could have caused him all kinds of grief if he wanted to. Anyhow, he got it here. I traded him a two-cycle golf cart and a few other things for it. When I got it, the front axle was broken. It's got a pivot right there, and literally um, it was snapped off. The front wheels were, were hanging. <laughs> <laughs> right I think one was off and the other one was hanging what I've did since getting it obviously I pulled the bolt out and took the front end out and um, welded it and then fish plated it on the back which put the front end back into motion but you can see as you look at it it's a little cattywampus 
Once again, this thing has 800 hours on it. It's beginning to show its wear. Um, you know, things are loose. The hydrostatics aren't in great shape. I've had to replace some spindles on it. The deck is becoming a little bit tired, you know, as you run along and you, uh, you have a tendency to hit the edge of it there, right? Um, and you bend it back, but it's happened enough time where that's getting a little tired. It doesn't cut perfectly level anymore. Once again, this ain't no golf course. There's plenty of uh, hidden nuisances that seem to pop out of the ground in the spring that uh, you run into. So it's it's been a very good unit. Replacement on these, I think you can... You can pick them up between four and five grand, between depending where you get them. The commercial ones have a fabricated deck. By fabricated, I mean people take metal and weld it together to get the deck. Where this guy here has a stamp deck. Most of the deck is made by stamping, not welding. The one that's welded together is thicker. And the way the welds are and so forth, it's just... A heck of a lot stronger it's more of a commercial obviously I'm happy with that Kawasaki engine now that it started considering I'm pretty good about the oil changes I'm not all that good about getting the grass out of it and all I'm actually very happy it's still with us still alive and still ready to cut grass Anyway, so that's kind of a repair and a review of the Cub Cadet RZT50. Once again, I've looked at these, um, and they go from between 250 and 750 with a blown engine. Um, if you have a source for an engine, you're good. Remember, you need the longer shaft. And I think this one uses... Uh, inch and a quarter um, and once again the longer guy it's it's I think it's six and a half inches long one's perhaps four and a quarter and this one's um, five and three quarters something like that there's there's a notable difference I had to go through that with my son's zero turn so if you do buy one and decide to swap out the engine, make sure you're careful about that. In the meantime, take care of your equipment, get the mice out of it, get everything cleaned up, get it out, get it running, use it. And I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope some of you find it helpful. Maybe you could uh, save yourself a trip to the repair shop by doing something as simple as replacing spark plugs, right? Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Um, feet down, heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.